By driving through some of the core neighborhoods, it becomes clear that many haven't fully recovered. The devastation displaced more than 18,000 people. And as you can see by all these empty lots where homes once stood, many decided to never come back. When my story's about an army of zombies, somehow I feel like I'm an easy target. Sorry guys, do I need a press pass or what? If you're looking for brains, I don't have any brains. If you take a look, you can see not much is left of that home, just really a hole in the ground. But there is one building left standing, and it might not look like much, but neighbors here say it really is worth saving. Despite the dry conditions and poor harvest, farmers like John have actually seen the value of their property increase throughout the drought. I have the latest update from Evansdale Police right here, and it says that local, state, and federal law enforcement are still vigorously searching for Elizabeth Collins and Lyric Cook. If you follow me over this way, you can see a section of that roof was actually tossed about and thrown all the way here. The Hawkeyes have really held the upper hand, racking up 23 victories. That's compared to just 12 for Iowa State. The school district wants students to open the door of achievement to future careers and college. As night falls in Dubuque, Corporal Travis Kramer starts his patrol. Uh, I think the best philosophy for a police officer to have is just assume that uh, everybody they come in contact with is, is dangerous to some extent. But on this night, the likelihood of that contact is elevated because he's actively searching for Dubuque's most wanted as part of Operation Falcon. Primarily our felonies and any crime of violence, those are high priorities. The advantage of Operation Falcon is these officers have the element of surprise. But that doesn't change the fact that wanted criminals can be desperate and sometimes dangerous. We're able to seek these individuals more safely. By teaming up with multiple agencies. There's two in this building. They have strength in numbers, an upper hand to safely seek out suspects with warrants out for their arrest. Uh, we try to get felons and, and gang members off the street. They knock on doors, checking any address associated with their target. So they'll, they'll change addresses a couple of times a year. When that fails, they take to the streets on foot. That's the nature of our business in law enforcement. We're always prepared. Tracking down neighbors, friends, or family members, they pick up on new leads, tips that eventually lead to an arrest. But with hundreds of wanted criminals still on the loose, they know there's still work to be done before the streets here are safe. So we may not catch them tonight, for example, but later on they'll turn themselves in because we, they know we're out and we're looking for them. In Dubuque, David Scanlon, CBS 2 News. Tiffany, I haven't played on hay bales in years, and besides being a lot of fun, they're also a valuable resource for farmers, and that resource, just like so many during a drought, could be running out. It's, it's been uh, unique for sure as far as how dry things have gotten. On Derek Chatama's farm, signs of the drought are everywhere. This is of concern of a lot of farmers. From corn that hasn't produced an ear to dried up creek beds. Well, typically it's about 10 feet wide. Water resources are at a trickle, and now Derek needs this water tank to keep his cattle hydrated. The food source is also withering away. And it's just not growing. It's gone into kind of a, a dormant state because it is so dry. Grazing has been so poor, Derek has been feeding hay for more than a month, something he typically doesn't even start doing until this time of year. But what that means for me is I'm going to have to keep all the hay that I made and feed it myself as opposed to being able to sell some of the surplus off. And that means less revenue. And on top of that, the increased cost of keeping the cattle cool and hydrated may eventually be passed on to consumers. In a couple more months, we'll find out the true story of what's how widely we are affected here. The best thing that can happen is that we get rain. And you can see things are pretty dry and crispy here, and we've heard a lot of comparisons to the drought in 1988. And uh, Derek said the one saving grace about that year was that we did eventually get rain in August. So if this August ends up being dry, he says, this year could very well be just as bad as 88 or even worse. Covering the corridor in Johnson County, David Scanlon, CBS 2 News. It's a memorial, I think, to uh, American know-how and determination. She served in so many ways. The mighty new battleship Iowa has now joined the United States Navy in active duty. Her most of her World War II effort was uh, escorting aircraft carriers. Seventy years later, the USS Iowa serves still. And it's also going to be a ship of education. Her next mission, sharing stories, moments that altered the tides of history. Considered by many the best all-around warship ever constructed. From its Pacific campaign in World War II to shelling beachheads in the Korean War, 
a symbol of strength during the unsettling times in the Cold War. They were the decisive factor for a nation that had sea power. A storied past John Wolfenbarger is part of. Every one of these pumps had to be at full capacity. He manned this exact station during World War II, and when General Douglas MacArthur accepted the Japanese surrender in Tokyo Bay, he was still aboard the Iowa, seen here, not far off in the distance. Every time I seen Iowa, the name Iowa, I thought of my ship. Now he's enlisting others to help save his ship, along with Dave Way, the Iowa's curator. So, but you can get an idea of uh, the immense size of the ship. Together they lead tours, each offering valuable insight. We've seen him go through the trial on the second time. Few are left like John, they, veterans with a personal connection with the ship. Each one of the anchors are 31,500 pounds. Dave holds an encyclopedic knowledge of the ship's inner workings and what makes her the most powerful battleship ever to set sail. Just to give you an example of the power of Iowa, her guns here could shoot a shell that weighs as much as a car over 20 miles. I knew this ship would never be sunk out there. I wasn't afraid of that at all. So now this ship's 70 years old, and she reflects um, a bygone era that a lot of people, you know, now will be able to actually stand next to. The Iowa stay here in Port Richmond is only temporary. Her final home as a floating museum will be in Los Angeles, but before she can shove off, they have a lot of work to do. Crews are working tirelessly, painting her massive exterior and piecing her together again. During the tour, a crucial phase of construction begins. The 52,000-pound mass is lifted more than 200 feet up. We only have a couple of feet of clearance here to actually get the mast up on top, so it's a very tight lift. It's a tremendous effort, captured forever as crews hit their mark in Old Glory waves once again above the Iowa's decks. And I know now it's going to be saved. <laughs> this is the beginning of a new chapter. To celebrate, John does something he could never do before. Can I have a picture? He sits atop the Admiral's chair to lead Iowa on her next mission. Uh, your younger generation is going to get a lot of that history, and they'll do it through this ship, yes. In Richmond, California, David Scanlon, CBS 2 News.